Hello again, it's Trevor here and thanks for tuning in. This video is all about helping you get the key insights quickly from a journal article. Now, other films I have in the series here show you how to use Google Scholar to identify and locate journal articles that potentially are of use to your literature review. And here's the screen showing Google Scholar. I've typed in my keywords at the top, environmental impacts of mycelium, and Google Scholar has pulled out all of these papers for me. There's 37 1600 so of course I don't have time to read all of those in detail but I'm using this one at the top the environmental impact paper here as an example so I've identified out of that list of 37,600 about 15 articles that are of real interest to me and this is the paper that I was able to download and it's about the environmental impacts of this particular mycelium. So then I'm looking at the individual paper and I've checked out the title and the authenticity of the journal publisher and how valuable that journal is in terms of high quality research output. So all that checks out for me. The keywords line up that I used in Google Scholar with the keywords that have been used uh, in this paper, as well as the title, as well as um, a quick skim read through the abstract. But that's all I've done so far. So this is the paper I want to know more about to help me start building up my literature review and understanding in this topic area. So at the moment I'm using Adobe Acrobat uh, Reader, but the process would be exactly the same if you were doing it by hand or using other software tools available to you uh, in doing this. But basically what it um, means is that I am just still focusing on the abstract, but now I'm going to go into more detail about what it is exactly uh, the insights are from this paper and by focusing just on the abstract it saves me a heck of a lot of time I'm not going to read the whole paper just in case after understanding the abstract in detail and in fine um, the fine information that is available in that abstract because after all an abstract is a summary of the whole paper that the authors have put together to give you that quick insight if I want more details later, that's fine. I can go back to the paper and read it all thoroughly. But just for now, I'm just focusing on the abstract and I am reading the abstract. And as I go, you can see that I have marked up by highlighting the critical parts that are highly relevant to my research and the things that I want to add to my literature review. So, like I say, I'm using this Adobe um, Acrobat Reader to help me do that. Um, so by pulling out this window on the side here, you can see those things that I've highlighted. So, for example, this part here tells me about what the present study, i.e. the study that we're reading about, has actually done. What, what is its focus? So, basically, this is a repeat of the title. But then it goes into some details about the process that has been used, so the, the methodology, and that's interesting to me because I want to know what methods were used by these authors in this research. But then it very clearly identifies the research output. So these are the findings from the research study that are reported in this paper and the findings are then highlighted in a little bit more detail the author's written thus it is found that blah 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 these findings are useful to me to build up my knowledge in this area and add value to my own literature review so i go through that abstract get right to the end and I've highlighted these key parts. I've made some further comments, as you can see over here on the right hand side. Like I say, if you were doing this by hand, you just use a highlighter pen and make your own handwritten notes. What I 
uh, sometimes do. I write notes up in this blank. If this uh, paper I printed out beforehand, I make my handwritten notes in this blank space uh, along the top and perhaps down the side. So I kept my notes linked very, literally very closely with this paper that uh, they've come from so I don't lose them in the future. So once I've got these comments, I've made the, the keynotes that are useful to me, I'm transferring them into a document that I'm going to use as the foundation uh, for my own literature review. Now it's important here um, to collect certain information. So the, f the first thing is to keep a track of the keywords that you've used. So what were the keywords you used to identify this article? So these are the keywords I've used in Google Scholar. So whichever search engine you've been using, you've had to type in some keywords in there. And this is the article or list of articles uh, that I have collected with the insights uh, from those articles added. So it's important so you can create a list of references and cite this work properly in your writing that you pull in the article's full uh, references, full details. Now, this is easier in some cases than others because if we go back to the article publisher's website, then um, you can see here, and quite a few online publishers do this, they provide a very easy facility to help you correctly cite the work. So if I click on that, um, what I did was export the citation to text because that's in um, a nice clear um, format for me to use and this is what uh, comes up. So I've just literally um, copied that into my Word document there and got rid of the uh, line spaces. So that gives me the full details that I need later when I come to reference, create my list of references and cite my article in my work. Now that's not in any particular format, that's just the format in which um, the publisher presented that citation to me. It's not particularly Harvard format or any of the others. Um, because you'll find when you write your work, if you're submitting to a journal, a conference, or perhaps submitting it to your um, academic supervisor as part of your course, they will specify exactly what sort of formatting you'll need for your references. So I just leave that like that at the moment. The other important thing, of course, are the insights. So I've clearly labeled this the, the insights from the abstract and just the abstract and I've basically taken my comments from this box here so it'd be like your handwritten notes if you've written them up here like I suggested earlier and just collated them together here so I only really want four or five insights from each paper just to give me um, a brief understanding of what the paper's about what the methods were, what the results of that research were, and this helps me when I come back to my notes. Imagine I've reviewed all the 15 articles that I pulled off uh, Google Scholar. I'm perhaps not going to remember the details of them all, and this is why I think this document, um, which I'm writing in Word, Microsoft Word at the moment, is going to be really helpful to help me craft and construct my literature review because I've got everything I need. I've got the insights that I can discuss in my literature review and apply it to my own research to, to push my research forwards and make sure I'm not repeating the work of that other people have done already. And I've got the, all the citation data that I need. So hopefully that's been uh, of help to you in quickly identifying uh, the key insights of articles that you think are relevant to your literature review. And you can see I've got um, a couple of other um, articles that I'm now going to read and do the same process for. So thanks very much. Bye for now.